the community. Uh, for us, it's not just about winning games. It's not just about competing, but we're invested. My wife, our program, the university, we're invested in the community. And for us, we would want nothing better than to see the, the youth of this, of this city to grow and develop, and not just from a soccer standpoint, but as people. We have that responsibility, and that was a big, big reason why I stand here before you because of, of that one meeting we had with Ronnie. We're so excited about the partnership because it's going to go well beyond the book. It's one of the reasons we're here today. It's, it's future education that we will participate in, and uh, we're looking forward to a long relationship with the YMCA. First time coaches, a lot of first time coaches, people that haven't been on a sideline. I'll tell you a quick story. I always uh, have three kids. Ronnie mentioned our family have three kids. 14 now, um, 11 and 9, and my uh, oldest one was playing soccer and uh, listening to the coach, he just trying to find out how he's talking to the kids, and, there, and one of the kids comes over and he pulls the kid over and puts his arm around him very nice, and he says, now you, you remember the rules of this team, and the kid looked up at me and he said, yes sir, he says, you, you know that when the referee makes a call, you don't curse at him and bemoan the call, is that right? He said, yes sir. He said, also, when players on your own team make a mistake, you don't yell at them, you don't call them names, and you don't belittle them. Do you understand that? He said, yes, I understand that, sir. So he said, and you also understand when the coach needs to make substitutions, and he pulls you out of the game to get somebody back in, you don't moan about it, you don't cry about it, you don't complain about it. You know that rule. He said, yes, I, I do. He said, good, now go over there and tell your mother that. <laughs> I started to learn how to coach a little bit and lead, and, and then my perspective changed because I was then leading for myself. It was very important that we won the next championship or the next game, that we had success because of maybe the next job or, or the next paycheck that was coming. And then we had this, this season at the University of Akron where we underachieved, tremendously underachieved. We had a very good team. And after the season, the coaches get together, we reflect on the season. What we realized is we had poor leadership. And we said, well, the, the guys that were the oldest on the team, they really, really struggled to, to lead. And, and we kind of dismissed it as an ingredient that was just missing that year. And then I, I read an article about Coach K at the University of, of Duke. And some of you may not be too fond of him, but he's been pretty successful. And, and in that article, was pretty interesting because the journalist was saying how it was amazing how successful he had been and, and the, the people he had produced and the, especially the leadership within the program and the culture he had. And he said, well, how do you find such good leaders? And Coach K said, we don't find them. We develop them. And it was at that point it hit me that our leadership was not because of the, the kids, it was my responsibility. That I didn't do my job of helping them grow as leaders. I didn't help them along and become the people they needed to become to lead the team. And it was at that point I took the eyes off of myself and put them on the players. I started helping them become better people, better players. And by doing so, we became a better team. My career took off at that point. The success I've had and the fulfillment I've had from that point forward has been phenomenal, simply because I took the eyes off of myself and put them on the team. I, I would challenge you tonight that we take a different perspective of what we see success as. We've all grown up probably playing sports. How many has grown up playing a sport? Most all. And from that experience, as a player and sometimes as a coach, we have a perspective of measuring success, of what success looks like. Now, I would challenge you today, whatever that is, to maybe have a perspective that is maybe a little bit different. And I'll give you a quick story. They did a research one time, a group of children, and they gave them the instructions. What they did was they tied a balloon to each one of their legs. And, then, and then the instructions were, the contest was, the game was, is that you had to pop somebody else's balloon without your, yours getting popped. Nine-year-old kids, they were excited about this. It was a all or, you know, zero-sum game. 
certainly everybody went after it, popping balloons, and at the end of the game, there was one kid that was happy, the rest were. One kid that everybody hated in a row, and the rest of them disappointed because they didn't win the game. So they do the same, the same, uh, the same game again. This time they bring in some kids that are mentally challenged. They give them the same instruction, and they start the game. Perhaps they gave them to them a little bit quick for them to understand, because now the kids are just popping balloons. Just all popping balloons. One kid was so frustrated trying to pop a balloon, this little girl held her balloon for him. So he could jump on it and pop it. He was so excited, she was just as excited. At the end of the game, every balloon was popped. And every kid in the room was excited. And they were holding hands and laughing and having a good time. Now I question you, which way was the game played that was successful? Was it the first way where only one wins and everybody else is angry? Or where they all participate together and excited about the outcome of the game? You see, we oftentimes measure our success simply by the outcome, by the result. As we as coaches, even at the level that I'm at, I'm judged, my job is about, quite honestly, whether I get results or not. But I choose to take a different perspective. That it isn't all about the results. The results will not always give us an indication of whether we're succeeding or not. And I challenge you tonight, as you take that responsibility of overseeing a group of players, of how we judge our success, how we judge whether we're moving along in the right direction. A big reason why we wrote this book was to simply give you a perspective, an understanding of how and why we coach. I respect you all for being here. One, for giving your time up just to be here tonight. It's amazing to see this many people here investing your time as volunteers. I do this because I'm passionate about it. I'm very fortunate because I get compensated for it. Your compensation comes in the development of the kids and who they become. But your investment in them is so critical. There is nothing more valuable than your time, quite honestly. We teach this to our kids that there, it's a great democracy of lifetime, isn't it? That everybody gets 24 hours a day. And it doesn't matter whether you're the president or the guy on the, on the corner that's homeless. We all get 24 hours a day. It's how you use your 24 hours that will dictate whether you're successful or not. Your significance or not. I have so much respect for you for being here tonight because what you said is you're going to invest something so valuable that you have in the kids that you're going to be coaching. I thank you for that because there's not so many that would give their time. Many of you sit here because you have kids playing the game. And maybe that's, that's your motive for doing it. But there's also going to be a group of kids that aren't yours, that you're investing your time in. And again, for that, I sincerely thank you. Please understand that these kids, what you're doing as well is giving them an opportunity in our society and where we are right now to simply exercise and how important that is. Getting them out. We're, we're in a society that right now that's fighting things like um, diabetes and obesity. And, and to give them that opportunity to simply come out and exercise is beautiful. Our society needs that. But more importantly than that, we need an environment where we can develop our youth and their character. What I know is this, is there is no better microcosm of life than teen sports. No better microcosm to teach life lessons. All of the teen, all of the, the principles that you need to be successful, you can teach in teen sports. That's one of the reasons why I love and I'm passionate about the game of soccer. Eleven people working together at the same time, it's incredible. But to do that, we all have to be on the same page. We all have to learn the principle. And what we know at the University of Louisville is when we teach those principles well, it doesn't matter what they do when they leave the University of Louisville, they'll be successful in whatever they do. So we use this game, the game of soccer, which I'm passionate about, and if you aren't, hopefully you will become. But we use this as a tool simply to grow our youth 
simply to teach them principles of success. There are four areas that we, we ask our staff to concentrate on for our team. And there are four areas that you're going to find in these books that, that we feel that if you get these four areas right, if you focus on these four areas, that ensures you're going to be a successful coach. The first is envision. Second is enjoy. Third is encourage. And the fourth is empower. Envision. And I'll read this quote. Whatever the mind of man can conceive and believe, it can achieve. Napoleon Hill said that. And it starts, our season starts at the University of Louisville with a direction. The most important part of our season is when we sit down as a group and we decide where we want to go and most importantly, what we want it to look like. What that vision is. For us as coaches, we need to understand what our role is, what our purpose is before this even starts of what do we want it to look like for us as coaches. What are we going to get out of the season? What is our perspective? Again, I, I told you from, from my standpoint, there was, a, there was a point where my perspective was very narrow focused. It was selfish. It was for my own gain. I, many times I would compare myself to others. I don't know if you as, as coaches out there any of you that have done this year in and year out, you kind of look around on the other field and say, how are they doing it? And you compare yourself based on the results of somebody else. We wouldn't ask our kids to do it, and certainly it isn't fair for us as coaches. Again, our perspective and how we see it and what we expect out of the season is so, so important. That vision. The focus, and I would challenge you in this, in the envision of what you see it should look like, the focus for us should be teaching life lessons that develop growth and character. And there are four traits at the YMCA. There are four traits that are very important, and I don't know how many knew that coming in, but four that they focus on. Caring, honesty, respect, and responsibility. We have written these up in the book, and these are four that are critical to who the kids become from a standpoint of shaping their character. We've talked about all four. And again, I would tell you, at the University of Louisville, we sit down at the beginning, and we've done this this preseason, and we talk, we have five different areas, five character traits that we shoot for at the beginning of the season. We know where we're headed, and we've decided what that destiny is gonna look like, but most importantly for us to get there, we know there's five character traits that we must hit to be successful. Here at the YMCA, they've identified those four. Those four are critical of what we need to develop in those players. Again, we get to use the game of soccer in teaching those character traits, in developing them within the kids. The, the winning and losing, all right, is not the focus of what we do, it is who they become in the process. There is gonna be a game and they will keep score, but the focus of what we need to, need to focus on is who they become and the principles they're learning. There's too many times that we, again, judge ourselves based on the results of it, on whether we win or lose. And there's too many times that the kid's self-image is wrapped up in that. Our, our significance as coaches is who they become at the end of the season, not the record. What we know is this is in 10 years, probably nobody's going to know who won the championship. But what they will know is their feeling, their experience, and who they become. <coughs> All right? They'll, that, that will matter for them in the rest of their life. Secondly, the envisioning part is to envision in the kids their gifts. Can we find in them what their gifts are? Tina and I felt so strongly about this that we wrote a book called Finding Your Gifts. That for many kids, they're searching for their significance. And many times, they're different to begin with. They're so different that they get ridiculed for it. For us as coaches here at the University of Louisville, and for you, it's to find their significance and their gift. And once you find that, is to celebrate that. Not tolerate it, but to celebrate it. 
there are so many kids that come in feeling a little bit different and a little bit odd, a little bit strange because of what they look like. All right, maybe their inability to do certain things. For us as coaches, one of our greatest responsibilities and roles is to find those gifts that those kids have. And when we do find them, encourage them, celebrate them, draw them out. I've once been told that God hides his greatest gifts in the most flawed people. And it's only those that will invest their time and energy in drawing them out that will ever see the fruits of it. Again, what we look for, do we look for the faults of it or do we look for their gifts? When we recruit, we're constantly looking for their significance. What do they do different than anybody else? What do they do better than everybody else? Because that's their significance in life. For us as people, our difference is our significance. And I would, I would encourage you as coaches, you're going to have an array of kids that have different abilities, starting at different levels. One of the greatest challenges is finding that gift that they have, drawing that out, and then celebrating it. We've had kids, uh, JT Murray, one of our former players, he actually was in with the Galaxy, LA Galaxy, this past year uh, in preseason. He came to us as a, a heralded forward, loved smacking a ball on goal, big left foot, loved it. He saw himself as a goal scorer. We saw him as a left back, a defender. We saw the gift in him. He ended up being one of the best left backs in this country his senior year, and that's why he got drafted to play in the MLS. But again, it's our, it's our responsibility to draw that and see that. See what they don't see in themselves. And that ability to do that will, will help them see that gift that they have. 